Come on and give your God a great shout of praise right there. Can we stand all over this building? Kingdom, we are excited tonight to hear from God through this powerful vessel of the Lord. I'm not sure how many of you all have heard of Dr. Moore, but I tell you tonight that she is going to come with precision and prophetic power. I want you to stand wherever you are, put your hands together and receive Dr. Valerie Moore as she comes tonight. Can we give the Lord a shout tonight? Come on. Come on, open your mouth because he's good. Open your mouth because he's kind. Open your mouth because he's wonderful. He's excellent. Come on, how many of you know if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I'm not quite certain of where I would be. While you're clapping, can we just shout real loud for 23 years of ministry? Come on. Hallelujah. And let's thank God for the great bishop of this great assembly. Come on. We give God the glory. And to the first family, we thank God for you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm so happy to see you. And if you lie to that neighbor, tell your other neighbor, I'm really happy to see you. And I thank God for who I believe are the greatest pastors in the world. And without their permission, I would not be here tonight. So I give honor to my pastors, Pastor Shamari and co-pastor Jackie White of Half Life Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am not going to prolong you with a whole lot of pulpit protocol and etiquette. Um, and I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do the normalities that I normally do, not because I've been given time restraints, but because I have been troubled uh, since I landed in this city. And I really thought that I was going to preach something from the chambers, but the Lord wanted to load a gun. So we have something brand new tonight that I've never preached before. And so giving honor to every pastor and leader and bishop, apostle, prophet, evangelist, whatever your role is, we thank God for you. Thank God for your praise and worship leader. I think they said her name was Taylor. We honor God for you and thank God for these wonderful musicians. Can you clap real loud? Get your Bible and journey with me. Let's go to the Old Testament, to Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah, chapter number one. Yes, Lord. It's going to make sense in a minute. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor it's all going to make sense. Oh, if you have a neighbor that doesn't talk, I beseech you to find another seat. I'm troubled by people that need a God they don't talk to. So I'll give you 10 seconds to make sure you're on the right road. Nehemiah chapter 1. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hannah and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. 
They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, says the prophet or says the cupbearer Nehemiah, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those whom him who with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family I have and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if, you're, if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled, to the ends of the earth I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored y'all didn't hear what I said good God Almighty the people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants oh Lord please hear my prayer listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honor please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. I'm going to take my text from verse 4. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. I want you to look at somebody on your role that is a talker and tell them to the subject for tonight. Oh boy. Brace yourself. Take a deep breath. Look at your neighbor. Make sure it's the right one. Make sure it's the, I, I promise y'all I heard God. I heard him. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. Here's, our here's our subject. I'm in a season, in a season. called burden. Called burden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you it's imperative who you talk to. Find somebody else that's going to respond back correctly that can maybe relate to you and say, neighbor, I'm in a season called burden. I'm going to say it until I get at least 30 of y'all and somebody online that can relate. I don't know what has been going on lately, but, but, but look at somebody that look like they've been going through and say, neighbor, the season has a name and it's called burden. Tell your neighbor, I just needed to know how to identify it. I just needed to give it a name because I felt alienated. But tell me and you both, we're in a sick heart total. It's a hot I don't like your neighbor. They're getting on my nerves and they bougie over here. I said, find three people, slap them on the backside of the head and say it's called burden, 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 burden. As a matter of fact, I want you to run far from a person that ain't had a burden. But run, get away from anybody that has not had a burden. Sound man, be good to me tonight, please. I said, call God Almighty. I said, find somebody and tell them I'm in a place that I've never been before. I'm in a season that I've never experienced. And it's called burden. Glory be your tapata, taste the tabanya, tabanya, 
Be seated if you can. Run when you feel like it. Shout when you need to. Dance when your feet get light. Glory, have a party. A sinner, no man, If you're anything like me, this country girl from West Virginia, tell your neighbor every round goes higher and higher. <laughs> tell your friends don't treat me like they could cut a mine. They're getting on my nerves in the back. I'm going to talk to the people over here. Be seated, please. Be seated. Don't do that, nephews. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Not yet, because it's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly. If it's all right with 21 praisers and 50 of you watching, I'm going to preach to you and me simultaneously. I preached to myself in the room and I almost lost it. Whew. All right, let's try this again. Sit down. The first verse, thank you, sir. I'll come get you in about 26 minutes. The first verse gives us the season that Nehemiah is in. The first verse says, late autumn. Late autumn is interpreted the month of Kislev, Hebraically, meaning the month, y'all ready for this? Yep. Of the dark. Oh, I'm looking for some talkers. On the biblical calendar, the month of Kislev is the ninth month of the year, counting from Nisan. The month is therefore one of the darkest months of the year. With Watch this now. With the days progressively getting shorter and the nights getting longer. Days are shorter, nights are longer. It's the season where it's becoming more difficult to see the breaking of day. This season will cause you to say things like, when is this going to end? God, I'm trying to find my section. This season will make you say things like, I take two steps forward. And I take 10 steps back. This, this, this season will make you say stuff like, if it ain't one thing. God, it's, 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 it's another. The Bible says in verse 1 that Nehemiah is at the fortress of Susa. Somebody say Susa. 
Now, the word fortress in this particular text means, now, ordinarily throughout the Bible, when the word fortress is cited, its meaning is normally a place of defense or a place of protection against large-scale attacks. But, but however, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter number one, uh, its meaning is stronghold. I'm, I'm going to come get you in just a second. It, it, it means stronghold. So then we look at the word Susa, and the word Susa means insignificant. So Nehemiah is starting the conversation out by telling us that he has been gripped. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. God help me. By a feeling of insignificance. And the reason he's been gripped is because of the season. God help me. It, 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 it's the appointed time. You're missing it over here. I'm going to talk to somebody in this section. It is the appointed time. And if it is the appointed time, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It means God, watch this, intended for it to happen when it happened. Ain't nobody saying nothing. God help me. to Lord have mercy. Tell your neighbor, I know you don't like the season, but you're in the season that God allowed. Who am I? talking to in here. You're in the season that God ordained. You're in the season of the dark. Tell your neighbor I've been gripped. Now, now let me go back because the very beginning of verse 1 says we are in autumn. Now prophetically and biblically, the month of autumn embodies or represents the season of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Because, because this is the season that the Lord, uh, that the land, rather, yields its harvest. Y'all quiet in here. Now, I don't know about anybody else in this room, but it is rather problematic for me. It's rather laborious for me, for me to say thank you, God help me, and give you praise when I have a front row seat. Ain't nobody saying nothing to watching everyone else's land yield fruit. Who is God talking to while I am over here at the same time under a stronghold called Susa. And this stronghold that I was led to. Y'all just miss what I said. I said I was led to this stronghold. And the reason I'm here is because I poured, oh God, I poured for the king. Oh, help me. Hey, glory. I'm in this season because of who I served. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me right there. I'm in this season because of whose cup I didn't let run empty. Ah, anybody in here can relate. If you ain't a servant, you ain't going to know what I'm talking about. But are there any servants in here that says, I got a title and submission? Who is God talking to in this room? I know how to go high and I know how to go low. Oh, God, help me in here. That's why the Lord trusts me with big. Because big does not affect my posture or my position. Uh, anytime he raises me up, I still can pick up trash. Who is God talking to? Anytime he raises me up, I can still get the prophet a glass of water. Anytime he raises me up, I'll be the first one to arrive and the last one to leave. I need you to slap your neighbor and you tell your neighbor, I'm in this season because I poured too much. Uh, tell your neighbor I'm here because I serve too much. I'm here because I submitted too greatly. I'm here because I bow too low. I don't like who you're sitting by. Your neighbor, I've got gifts, callings, and abilities that presented me to this moment. Not only that, but this season has me feeling somewhat insignificant, somewhat minuscule, somewhat lesser than, somewhat trivial, somewhat irrelevant, somewhat meager. And I am feeling this way not because I've done something wrong. Y'all ain't ready for this. 
but because people around me don't understand submission. Y'all quiet. Nehemiah had to be in trouble because the people around him did not know how to obey the laws of Moses. Y'all quiet in here. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. It's not me, it's the people around me that have a problem with submission and obedience. But let me help you. Newsflash, these are the people you told me to serve. Good God Almighty. And now we are all in a jam because of who I'm trying to help. Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. Is there anybody in the room besides this country girl that can say sometimes helping them makes it feel like it's killing me? Who was God talking to? Y'all quiet in the backside of the desert. But I need somebody in here that knows what it feels like to die trying to keep somebody else alive. That knows what it feels like to give all of your energy to somebody. And when it's time for you to do it for yourself, you ain't got nothing left. Who is God trying to help in here? Tell your neighbor I'm in this predicament because I was a helper. I don't know who this is for. Oh, help me. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room. Good God. Tell your neighbor it was because I didn't stop helping. Watch this. They quit me, but I didn't quit them. They left me, but I didn't leave them. God Almighty, tell your neighbor, I prayed for people that prayed on me. Ain't nobody saying nothing over there. I'm going to talk right here. I said, tell your neighbor, I was loyal to people that left me. Good God Almighty, they tried to destroy me with lies. And I could have killed them with the truth. Who is God trying to help in here? Tell your neighbor. God has me submitting and serving people that have been disloyal, backstabbers, betrayers. Ain't nobody talking to me in here. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I don't know how to not serve. Just a part of my DNA. I did everything you told me to do and help everyone. You instructed me to help only to end up in a stronghold called insignificance. God help me, Papa Ponte, bitch. Glory, hallelujah. They quiet in the middle. I'm talk to the left side of the room. Uh, my left, you're right. Many scholars attribute Nehemiah's book to his name. God help me. But it is not known who wrote this book because it's design, literally unlike the other books in the Bible, uh, it is a chronological feature of three different leaders. Somebody say three different leaders. And three different leadership styles. Its first highlight is uh, a person by the name of Zerubbabel, yeah. who is of a Davidic origin. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And Zerubbabel thought to have originally been a Babylonian, a Jew who returned to Jerusalem at the head of a band of Jewish exiles and became the governor of Judea and under the attacks of the Persians and, and, and influenced by the prophets Haggai and Zechariah. And here's the thing I like about Zerubbabel. He rebuilt the temple. I'm coming. It's going to make sense in a minute. So Rubabel went through all of that. And at the end of it, he rebuilt the temple. You ain't hear what I said. And he didn't destroy it. Oh, okay. I, you missed that part. He rebuilt what he didn't break. Oh, God. Who is God talking to? How many times has God made you start over? And it wasn't even your fault. Is God talking to anybody in the middle? Anybody online can relate to me that God made you start over and it wasn't even your fault. Tell your neighbor, I'm in a middle of a start over season and I'm here and it's not because of me. I, 
I would be okay if God was making me rebuild what I broke. But what disturbs my spirit is when he makes me rebuild what they tore up. And wait, I have to rebuild it after what I did build matured. Just when we got to the place where things were looking stable, here comes a disruption. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me right there. God, who am I helping in here? And he said, Ezra, oh God, rebuild the temple. Next it highlights, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, he said Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple. And next it highlights Ezra. And according to the Bible, the Persian king sent Ezra, watch this now, to bring the Torah. God help me. It's the five books of the laws of Moses to the Jews. And, and modern scholars have claimed not only that uh, Ezra brought the Torah to Jerusalem, but they actually say that he wrote it. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And in doing so, Ezra created Judaism. Without Ezra, they say that Judaism would not exist. Uh, now, here's where I get happy because Ezra was worthy of being the vehicle to the Torah. And had it not already been given, uh, watch this, uh, to, to, through Moses, the Torah, here it is, was forgotten. But Ezra restored it. Is anybody noticing a trend? Good God Almighty. Zerubbabel had to rebuild what he did not break. God help me in here. And that was Ezra had to rewrite, Lord have mercy, what he did not lose. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. Tell your ah, tell your neighbor, God is about to let you build it from somebody else's scraps. You just missed a good place to run and jump. I said God is about to let you do it over with what somebody else mishandled. God is about to let you do it over with what somebody else dropped. God is about to let you start over. I'll come in a minute. Then we have to we have to highlight Nehemiah. He is an official. He's serving, serving under a kingship of a tax season. These three men represent something uh, that life has caused many of us to lose. Because if you're anything like me, life be life in. Oh, help me in here. And what many of us have lost is the formula for vision. Oh, God. You should have ran right there. There is a spiritual modus operandi and a, a credo for this thing called vision. Who preach God? So here Nehemiah, watch this. He, he's in a routine. This is what you don't understand. This is Nehemiah's routine. After he fixes a thing, he goes and gets by himself. This is his normal routine. This is, this is normally how he does it. And he's in his week and he's in his routine. And God wants to show him something. They're quiet in the back. And, and then when God shows Nehemiah something, what he sees is uh, disruption and disturbance. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. What's the point, Dr. Val? You will know that you have eyewitnessed the God thing. Because the beginning of the God thing is always disturbance. I don't like when God is about to introduce new vision to you, he will confirm it by allowing the adversary to bring disturbance. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. God, help me in here. When God is getting ready to do something different, ain't nobody saying nothing. How do you know he's about to do something different? Because everything around you gets loud. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Noisy, confused, disruptive. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Touch your good neighbor that's talking and say, neighbor, you saw well. 
you saw well. You saw well. You saw well. Because most of you think you ain't seeing. Because what you're seeing is a dilemma. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. But what you're seeing is the eyes of God. God let you see it like that. Because why? 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 Why would God allow me to see like this? Because there are times that God will allow a disturbance because you become complacent in your routine. Whoa, hey, they didn't like that. I knew they would get quiet. Let me talk to the people online. Lord have mercy. Complacency always hinders perception. Good God Almighty. Per complacency is a hindrance to vision. You ain't saying nothing to me right there. In other words, the reason God brings this divine disruption is because your routine has you trapped. God help me. You quiet in here. They ain't saying nothing. Lord have mercy. I said you're, 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 you're stuck in your routine. God help me. You're stuck in your traditional thinking. You are stuck in your ways. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Even scientists, scientists will tell you that when you are dieting, right? Uh, when you are dieting, uh, your body can become accustomed to your routine of exercise and eating. Uh, and you will hit a plateau uh, because your body uh, is used to what you're doing. Uh, so it no longer responds. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Uh, if you want the body to respond, you've got to give it a disruption. Uh, you've got to starve the body. Ain't no, hey, 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 hey. They quiet over there. You've got to starve starve the body. You've got the body has got to tell the body you can't have that. Ah, ain't nobody saying nothing. And the body will begin to kill its own fat cells. Good God Almighty because it's looking for something to feed. Oh, who is God talking to in here? Tell your neighbor you're about to experience a divine disruption. Put your hands, because your neighbor, I don't like the way they responded to you. But put your hands on yourself and say, self, self. it's a divine disruption. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Taylor. In the last season, it was the devil's disruption. Glory, hallelujah. But in this season, this disturbance is coming from the Lord. I don't like the way y'all looking at me, looking at you. He's coming to change the cycle. He's coming to break systems. Tell everybody close to you, something around me is about to break and shake. And if you can't handle turbulence, tis the season to not so. You just missed what I said. Huh? If we're shaking, if we're not shaking, we're not soaring. Is anybody going to talk to me? But I need about a hundred of y'all that are watching me and in this room to permit God to shake it up. Good God Almighty. Tell the Lord, get me out of my comfort zone. Do whatever you got to do to break these cycles. Break these systems. Break these traditions. Get me out of my one set mentality. Whatever you got to do, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Run to three people, slap them a high five until I feel something shaking for you. I don't like who you're talking to. I said run to three people, slap them a high five and say, I feel something shaking for you. I feel something shaking. God is about to disrupt you. God is about to take you out of your normality. No longer will you be normal. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. He's about to break your comfort. This is the crazy part. God disrupts Nehemiah's comfort, but his name means the Lord will comfort. Watch this. Oh, God. Sometimes God will name you according to what you will face and not according to who you are. 
Lord, ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. He will name you, glory, hallelujah, according to what you will face and not, God, y'all ain't saying that you want me to prove it, I'll prove it. I'll prove the woman with the issue of blood. You don't know her name. God, help me. The man by the pool of Bethesda. You don't know his name. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Tell your name. I got a name, but in this season, it ain't necessary to call. Lord, have mercy in here. I'm looking for three people that will jump up on your feet and say, God, I don't mind the disruption. Can I bless everybody standing? People will label you where they left you. God, ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. I said, people, hallelujah, thine the glory, will label you where they left you. The problem with that is, I'm okay with you leaving me, but don't come back because I got to get up in me. Ooh, hey, glory. Okay, you just missed what I said. Don't come back when I get back. Who is God talking to in here? You ain't it too late. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You are behind, baby. Good God Almighty. You should have caught me a year ago when I was struggling with my identity. But now that I've realized who I am, I realize I can discover me without you. Who is God helping in here? Tell your name. If you're going to come back, come back quick. Wrong neighbor, wrong section. Tell somebody on your road because my cutoff game is strong. My cutoff game in this season is real, real strong. I have a forget you anointing. Who is God talking to in here? Watch this. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Nehemiah is among them that have escaped exile. Tell your neighbor, he escaped. And he escapes exile, Bishop. And in verse number two, he asks a question. And the blessed part of that is that he asks the right question. Here's what blesses me about his questions. Uh, for, and let me say this to 100 screamers. If you are not in tune with the needs of the people, then you're not equipped to impart ideas. What did she just say? I just said, stop trying to make deposits in the areas you have no discernment. God, ain't nobody saying nothing in here. I don't know what's wrong with Boston. Maybe I should have preached this in Charlotte. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me. I said, tell your neighbor, if you can't discern me, don't try to advise me. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Am I helping anybody? I'm tired of getting advice from people that can't even discern my season. Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty. Even the scripture says, if they're hungry, feed them. And you're trying to pray for me, but I need a plate. Ain't nobody saying nothing right there. Who was God trying to help? I don't need prayer. I need food. Help me today, God. Is anybody in here going to be honest and tell the truth? Some advice I don't need. Here it is. Because some people can only, well not some, but people can only advise you from their level. You just need to start looking at folk and tell them I'm too high for you. I got to go low to take your advice. Oh God, you just missed what I said. Listening to you will demote me. Who is God talking to in here? Lord have mercy. Some of y'all can't grow because of who has your ear. Lord have mercy in here. If some people you need to cut off their opinion. Watch this, because in this season, watch me, if you're not seeing for you and you alone, but you're seeing for a specific type of people, and you are included in those type, tell your neighbor, I'm not just seeing for me, 
I'm sick of your neighbor. Tell somebody else. I am not just seeing for me. But there is a group of us, my God, in here that have escaped. Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> you ain't heard what I say. There is a group of us that have made it out. Okay, I'm coming now. You didn't hear me. I'm not saying you ran from a robber. No, I am talking about escaping from exile. That means I had battles. Lord have mercy. I had wars. Hallelujah. I had near-death experiences. I had moments where I almost lost my mind. I had moments of it should have been me. It could have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes. All left alone without a friend. Just another number with a tragic end. But he did not see. Tell your neighbor. I am among them that escaped. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, if you knew my testimony, you would dance with me every time I jumped up. Who was God helping? Good God Almighty. But is there anybody in here say, forget a dance partner? If you don't want to dance with me, I can dance all by myself. Because, like your grandmama said, when I think of the goodness, wrong side, wrong section. Tell somebody, when I look life is too early more and I think about everything that is brought me through I got a reason ah, I got a reason to give him glory I've got a reason to give him praise because if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side I would have never made it out I would have never escaped but thank God I'm here and it's by the grace of he asked them Nehemiah asked a question he said how are those that made it out how are those that broke through the barrier called bondage Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. How are those that fought until they had nothing left? How are those that made it out even though the odds were against them? How are the ones that have had difficulties, deadlocks, and dysfunctions? How are those that escaped through days of adversity, catastrophe, and calamity? How are they? How are they? How are they? Now let me throw a dagger if you don't mind. Since I'm not scared of you, you didn't bring me here, you can't get me home. Watch this, Bishop. The dangerous thing about questions. Have mercy on me, O oh Savior. The dangerous thing about questions is asking the right question in the wrong room. Hmm. Because some questions, or some rooms rather, will make you feel like your questions are irrelevant. When really, it's the other way around. <laughs> You're trying to speak the language of future in an irrelevant room. You can't speak future to stuck. <laughs> you cannot speak ascension to people that are comfortable living on the ground. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me right there. You cannot speak ascension to people that don't want to let go of bad. Good God Almighty, you cannot uh, speak ascension to people uh, that, good God, help me preach this like you gave it to me, uh, to people uh, that are locked in their own traditions and mentality. Well, my grandmama did it like this, uh, and my granddaddy did it like that. Uh, I'm sorry, baby, but we're not in the days of your grandmother, and we're not in the days of your grandfather. This is a new generation. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Uh, good God Almighty, but tell your neighbor. I need friends in this season. I need co-laborers in this season that don't have a problem with ascension. I need people that don't have a problem with going up. I need people that don't have a problem with getting stuff out of their bag. Who is God trying to help in here? Tell your neighbor, if you're going to come with me, we're only going in one direction. And we're ascending. Slow down. Slap your
your neighbor good, slap him, and say, neighbor, I love you, but my assignment in this season is way bigger than you. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Somebody scream and say, my assignment is beyond my vicinity. It's beyond my proximity. It's beyond my proximity. Scream at somebody and tell them my vision goes beyond this. No, 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 no. Tell three people, don't get stuck where you see me. Don't get stuck where you see me. I won't be here long. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Tell you, never, don't get stuck where you see me. I won't be here long. Tell them I'm from the school of hard knocks. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I got an associate in the agony. I got a bachelor's in backstabbers. I got a master's in misery. Out. Okay, Pastor. I'm okay, sir. Bless you. They answer him and they say, Yes, they made it out on vacation. However, they in bad shape. He said, the conditions, says the Message Bible, are appalling. The wall is still in ruins. And the gates are broke down to dust. Here's the problem with some of us that have escaped. The aftermath is just as bad as the tragedy. Oh, my heavens. Anybody in here besides me that says the grass is not greener? On the other side, because had you tested the grass before you went there, you would have realized the grass is fake. Ain't nobody sick. But may I use my uh, prophetic license? Make an announcement that there are some of you in this room and some of you watching online. Oh, Lord, help me. I might lose them right here. That are about to be delivered, not just from the war and not just from the battle. Lord, have mercy. Y'all ain't screaming. Not just from the fight. But you're about to be delivered from the aftermath. Lord have mercy, good God. You're about to be completely set free from not just the issue, but what the issue left in you. Who is God talking to? You're about to be delivered from what it did to you. You're about to be delivered from the evidence that you went through what you went through. God said, I'm about to clean up every speck of the leftover of your trial, your tragedy. Oh, God. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Thank you, sir. Get bold and brave. Slap somebody on your street and tell them newsflash. Hallelujah, thine the glory. You have never seen a me before. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't talk to nobody over here. So let me talk to somebody in the middle of the room. Let me talk to somebody online. Put up a high five emoji and say, you've never seen a me before. A me has never existed in life, you quiet. As a matter of fact, you think you know me, but you have no idea. You met the me with the aftermath. But tell your neighbor there's another me coming. But oh my not she at the papa higher. But on this day, God is about to deliver a group of praisers from the very redolence of their battle. From the very fetter of your fight. Who is God talking to? Tell somebody by this time tomorrow, you won't be able to recognize me. Oh my God. By this time tomorrow, you won't the same way. By this time tomorrow, my praise is going to be different. 
By this time tomorrow, my shout is going to be different. By this time tomorrow, my worship is going to be different. Why? Because he's delivering me from the aftermath. So now watch this. Watch me, watch me. He hears about the situation and the condition that the tragedy has left the people in. He sees what being exiled has done to the people. And this man, Nehemiah, doesn't start panicking. Oh, God. He doesn't start bargaining with believers. He doesn't start manipulating relationships. In this moment, he gives us the blueprint and outline as to what is the prerequisite and what is prescribed for rebuilding and building bigger. I just prophesied. Somebody in this church didn't catch it. He gives us the prescription. Watch what, watch what he does. Well, the Bible says that Nehemiah does something so brilliant, Bishop. The Bible says, y'all not going to like this, but pastors... If you don't applaud them, they are not going to. The Bible says he does something brilliant. He, he sat down. Go with me now. When God is about to take you out of one place and bring you to another, the first indication of that is he will make you sit Let me prove it. In Exodus, when Pharaoh tried to kill Moses, the Bible says that Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh, Pharaoh and sat by a well. Y'all quiet in here. In Ruth chapter 4, when Naomi was about to sell a huge piece of property, Boaz grabbed some wealthy men and some elderly men and, and told them to sit down. Because he said, I, I, I got to talk to y'all about something. He said, I got to ask a question about Naomi's property. Are you capable of buying it? Buy it. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Because if you are not capable of buying it, I have no problem investing in investing in expansion. You just miss what I Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 13, they had to sit down and gather fish. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And Mark chapter 14, God told the disciples, sit down until I'm done praying. But the one that blesses me the most, hallelujah, was in Matthew chapter number 27, verse 61. There was two girls by the name of Mary, God help me, and Mary Magdalene. One sat on the left side of the tomb, and the other sat on the right side of the two and they sat there until my savior got up and they went a running and announcing that he is risen from the dead tell your neighbor hallelujah thine the glory i will sit here until something dead rises who is got y'all quiet back there but i want to talk to somebody that's ever been in a dead season the lord told Sit there until it gets up. Sit there until you see the tomb rattle. Sit there until you see the rock move. Who is God talking to? Tell your neighbor. Something is about to get up. You ready? You ready? Because at the head of every great shift is a seat. I said, at the head of every great shift is a seat. Tell your neighbor, if you don't like seats, you can't handle shifts. I'm coming. You pushing me. The next thing, nephew, he does is something that a lot of us don't like to do. The next thing he does after he sits, the Bible says very clearly, he weeps. Watch. Which means he took a, mo he took a moment to get his emotions out of the way. Hallelujah. 
he's very specific about his way of processing. Uh, because watch this. The Bible says in verse 4 that for days I mourned. But verse 5 says, then I talked to God. Oh, God. <laughs> Which tells me, oh, God. Which tells me the thing that is stopping some of you from your word is your weep. God help me. Hey, they not saying nothing in here. Oh, I got to talk to somebody online. You, you didn't hear me. You have too many unaddressed, unconfronted emotions that are tampering with your ability to hear what's next. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. You're hearing emotionally and not futuristically. Who is God talking to? You're hearing in the moment and not in the matter. God, ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. You are stuck on how you feel and not where you're going. Who is God talking to? Lord, have mercy. You're too busy. Lord, have mercy. You're trying to work and weep. You cannot do that. You got to pick one. Put your tears on a schedule. You're weeping during working hours. God help me. Lord, ain't nobody saying nothing. Your, 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 your tears gotta go on a clock. People think I'm insensitive, but sometimes I have to tell my staff, we working, why are you weeping? You weep when the shift, weep when the shift is over. God, ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. I can't have weeping workers. Glory, hallelujah. Put your tears. Tell your neighbor, in this season, my season is too vital uh, to have weeping workers around me. I got to have folk around me that know when to weep and when to work. Who is God talking to? Y'all quiet over there. Let me talk over here. You got to know when to weep and when to work. Oh, y'all get ready to get real mad at me. I'm sorry, elderly people, but this is how we talk. I can't have no punks around me in this season that I'm in. I can't have no weak people around me in this sea. Yeah, I know the season is dark. I know we feeling insignificant, but I don't need it to ruffle your feathers. I need you to know that, come here Bible, all things work together. Because I believe that what Nehemiah recognized, unlike most of these New Age church folk, is that God doesn't trust a builder who doesn't weep first. I don't know who this is for. No, if what you're building, ain't nobody saying nothing, hasn't made you cry, glory, hallelujah. I don't trust it. Ain't nobody sick. Hey, Papa, you did my nun shine. No, tell me, don't tell me what you're building until you can tell me what you weeped over. Who is God talking to in here? Don't tell me what you're building until you can tell me how bad it hurts you. Don't tell me what you're building until you can tell me what it costs you. Don't tell me what you're building. They quiet in that section. They ain't building nothing. But I'm looking for somebody that can say I lost family, friends, loved ones. Who is God talking to? I lost job, money, people. Who is God helping in here. I lost investments, time, strategies, opportunities. But that's what the problem is. You want to build and not break. Whoa. Glory, hallelujah. But I'm looking for some people in here that says, I've been in a weeping season. Y'all quiet over here. But can I testify and tell you, the weeping won't last long. Brace yourself, you ready? Take a deep breath online and in this room. If you're not burdened by it, then it's not meant for you to be. Come on, so never care. What you can't weep over, you can't work for. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate your PowerPoints. Lord have mercy. I appreciate all your leadership trainings. I appreciate your Zooms. I appreciate all of it. But I'm very afraid of a teaching that does not include trial. 
I am afraid of a word that does not include weight. I'm afraid of a word that does not include weariness. I am I am afraid of a word and a God-given word that does not include wounds and burdens. Y'all quiet in here. But where is the burden, church? Y'all quiet in here. The church that carries tremendous responsibility. God Almighty, that goes outside of the four walls. Where are the church folk that said, I know it was God that gave it to me? Because there is no way I would have signed up for this kind of hell. Ain't nobody shepherd who is God speaking to on the left side, your right of the room? Look at your neighbor and say, This had to be God. Don't, don't tell me what you're building. Don't tell me what you're building until you can tell me what is disrupting your sleep. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Y'all quiet in the back. Don't tell me what you're building until you can tell me what is causing you to lose your appetite. Good God Almighty, what is causing you discomfort? Because I believe that a man with no burdens has no business. But I need about 25 of y'all in this room and 100 of y'all online to jump up on your feet and holler with authority, burden me, oh God. No, some of y'all scared to say it. You're scared because you won't big without burdens. But I want somebody in here that say, I'll take the struggle if I can see the outcome. Who is God talking to in here? I need you to get out of your seat. Run to three people. There's a burden coming. I said, tell three people. There's a tremendous, gigantic, ginormous, exuberant burden that's coming. I said, you need to talk to the right people and tell them a burden is on its way. There's a burden coming. There's a burden coming. There's a burden coming. Hallelujah. You ain't talking to the right people because they mad. They, don't, they want the business, but they don't want the burden. They want the wealth, but they don't want the weariness. Who is God talking to? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. The musicians is pushing me too early. This is the reason, nephew, that the devil doesn't want you to sit down. Because what he has mastered, watch this, is the devil has mastered masking seats with failure. This is why he wants you to remain emotionally unstable. Because there is a greater unction, hi -ya -ya -ya, and a greater chrism behind your battle. And it's called a burden. Y'all quiet in here. There is something greater behind your bleeding. Hallelujah. And it's called a burden. God is saying, before I let you see what I'm going to show you, I must introduce you to its need. You want the baby until the baby cries. And then when the baby starts crying and the bottle don't work, God. Help me in here. Lord him. The pacifier ain't working. He tied my full time. The packs on the back ain't working. Now, you are panicking. And you're getting frustrated with innocence. Because you want the baby minus the burden. Glory, hallelujah. And the Lord says, no, I'm going to let this baby weep. 
until you can feel its pain. I'm not lifting it, God Almighty, until you know what it needs. Lord, have mercy. I'm not lifting this until you can recognize the cry. Because all cries don't mean the same thing. Y'all quiet over here. Ain't no saying, nobody saying nothing. I'm training you in what the weeping is. Who is God helping in this room? You want the weeping to stop, but God says you're in training. I'm not going to let the weeping in until you're able to give a definition. Who is God talking to in here? Ain't nobody saying nothing. You're being bleeding. You're bleeding with a burden. He's headed to Jairus' house. Everybody's reaching for him and grabbing. Help me here. And, and, and one woman, hallelujah, dying to go with an issue. Y'all quiet in here. All them people, and the Bible only says she got an issue. You quiet in here. Everybody grabbing. But Jesus doesn't respond until the issue touches him. Oh, boy, y'all quiet. They quiet in this room. And when the issue touches him, something leaves him. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And Jesus stops and says, who? Who touched me? And the disciples said, all these people around you, and you're asking the question, who touched me? He said, no, because I felt an issue. Good God of mine. He said, I recognize this. Watch this. He said, because this thing burdened me, and I felt the burden leave. Who is God talking to? Ah, glory to God. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to be here until I'm touched. Hey, glory, hallelujah. I'm going to be in this shape until the issue causes me to lose something out of my body. Who is God helping in here? Tell your neighbor the burden ain't leaving until virtue leaves your body. Until you stagger on your feet. Until you get weak in the knees. Until your head get cloudy. It ain't leaving till then. wants to mask the seat with failure. I'm almost there. He wants to mask the seat with failure. God says, before I let you go, I'm going to introduce you to its need. So you must feel the agony of it. You must feel the grief of it. You must feel the shame of it. It's called a burden. And let me come get you. Let me come get you. The word burden in the Greek means beros. Hallelujah. As Paul uses it in Galatians, which means a daily burden or weight. However, the Hebraic word for the word burden is massa. Now, I'm not talking about massa from slavery. Oh, uh, God, my. But this massa, M-A-S-S-A, means an utterance. Okay, y'all quiet. Which means a spoken word. Y'all quiet. So the burden that you're feeling right now has a name. Oh, hallelujah. And the name of this burden is called Massa, which is the, whoa, glory, hallelujah, which is the prophecy that was assigned to you before you were a you. God, they quiet in the back side of the room. You are grieving the assignment. Y'all quiet in here. Lord, have mercy. Now watch this. Watch this, Taylor. This burden is also known as a donkey's burden. It's known as an animal's burden. In the Bible, like the donkeys, the mules, and the oxen. We're called animals of burden, you ready for this? Because of their ability to carry heavy loads. They, they, they're quiet. Holler at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I can't do weak in this season because what I'm carrying requires strength. It's heavy, y'all quiet. Whoa, 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 watch this now. The thing Lord have mercy, I almost ran. I almost ran. The thing with Massa, you ready? We're almost at the end. The thing with Massa, sir, is that you cannot move from under it until you address it. Stay quiet. God 
will never trust you to see for the future of a people you can't carry a burden for. You ready? It's too many people calling themselves leaders that haven't weeped. And the reason they're not weeping because the load is not heavy. You're carrying a hope, not a burden. And your hope is for fame and notoriety. Who is God talking to? But I'm looking for a leader that says, if I never get discovered by fame, ain't nobody saying nothing in here. God, give me the burden for the people. Give me the burden for the people. Give me the burden. I can't be under a leader that can't weep for me. I, I, watch this, you ready? I can't have a leader that can't pick me up in the spirit. That if I don't call you, you hear my cry. Oh my God. Your problem is, you will dance, oh Lord. You will dance over the fact, I'm coming, sir, that, that, that he's pouring out blessings. But you won't shout over the fact that he's pouring out burdens. God help me in here. They quiet. I'm coming. One of the major issues of burdens is trying to get the people around you to understand it. We almost stay here. If you ever want to lose clarity of what you are building, try explaining it to people that don't have a burden. Most of you don't have clarity because of who you're telling. Y'all ready to shout? Every burden doesn't include a team. The Bible says they dropped the burden off. Nehemiah carried it. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. They give the message and go missing. Ain't nobody saying nothing. This is the season when you got to do it by yourself. They quiet over there. This is the season when you got to weep alone. This is the season where you got to cry in the dark. Who is God trying to help? Every burden, every burden doesn't include a team. Every burden doesn't include your family. And some burdens come with a uh, contract called separation and distinguishment and alienation. All of this, Dr. Val, so why didn't Nehemiah quit? It's simple. Y'all ready? For, I'm going to run. Oh, my. Whoa, those of you online, catch this now. Watch me. The reason he didn't quit, Taylor, is because something so powerful, and this is where I hollered in the room, the burden predated the building. I was crying over something I couldn't identify. I couldn't sleep over something that I didn't know what it was. I couldn't give it a name. I've been carrying this. Can I bless you? Watch this now. Oh, Jesus. Some of y'all pass judgment on people you have no idea what they've been burdened by. Watch this, Nehemiah. Watch this. He did something extraordinary. But the only time you hear about him is in this book. Y'all, y'all not going with me. No, Nehemiah should have been referenced over and over. He pleaded with the king for the people, and the king heard him. Why are we only talking about him and minimizing him to a book? Y'all quiet in here. 
Can I bless you? Some of the most powerful people aren't popular. You quiet. Who in this room is like me? They're saying, my goal in this season is to possess power over popularity. God help me in here. Tell your neighbor I want to be dangerous and unknown. Good God Almighty. I want to be powerful and private. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. If I don't ever get a like, if I don't ever get a share, if they never call my name, just give me power. Who is God talking to? You looking at me like I'm looking at you. But I need somebody in here that says many don't know my name. But I got power. I got possession and position. Who is God talking to? Tell your neighbor, I just want power. I want to be wealthy and hidden. Strategic and silent. Producing in pride. Some of y'all making announcements too early. Look at your neighbor, tell him you talk too much. Tis the season to shut up. Ain't nobody saying y'all quiet back there. God Almighty, who is God talking to in here? You gotta keep it private. Until it's finished. Watch this, watch this now. Watch, watch, watch. Because cause we only talking about the weep. But after the weep, something happens, man of God. The Bible says that after the weep, then I pray. Watch what he does. Watch, you ready? Don't dance too early. He says, I said to the Lord. Now, they, they're in ruins. They're in the aftermath. The gate is become dust. The wall is shattered. And Nehemiah has cried. And immediately after the cry, my time, Nehemiah says, you are great. Whoa. Whoa. They quiet. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Nehemiah says, you are awesome. Good God Almighty. Nehemiah says, you are magnificent. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Well, I came here to preach to y'all tonight. And I came all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. What did Nehemiah just teach us? That if you want to lift the burden, you got to learn how to praise him with it. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. He's not lifting it until you can tell him who he is while you're under it. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. I need somebody in this room to look down your row and tell your name. I'm in a season called Birdie and I don't know how you're feeling but don't feel sorry for me because while I'm Birdie I just need you to do one thing. Help me praise him. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Help me praise him under pressure. Help me praise him in pain. Help me praise him while I'm working. Help me worship while I'm weeping. Look at your neighbor and grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake your neighbor. Shake him real, real good. And say, oh, oh, neighbor. If you're going to stick with me, you got to be a praiser. Don't cry when you ain't seeing me cry. Don't weep if you don't see me weep. But I'm going to weep and worship. I'm going to be in pain, but I'm a praiser. I'm going to be buried, but I'm a blessing. Because one thing I know, how do I praise him in the state? I'm in. Because you must remember that the Bible says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Proverbs 12 says a man has a weight in his heart, but a good man knows that the word makes him glad. The Bible says, in Give him thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You've got the wrong.
name. If you take 30 seconds and bless him with a burden, he'll let you build with one. You just miss what I say. I said, grab your neighbor and tell him there's a burden, but I'm building. And I heard the songwriter say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Out of your seat, run to three people, slap them a high five, and tell them congratulations for the bird. No, 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 no. The Lord says, The quicker you bless me, the quicker I let it come. I'm sorry, but this is one bless you can't do with your hands. I ain't got nobody saying nothing, but if your feet work, they ought to move. If your mouth work, it ought to be open. Tell your name, I'm a cry and shout. Weep and dance. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. Let's see. Let's test the temperature of the room. I want you to find somebody that you know got a burden. Watch this. Now, now watch the instructions. Bless him for them. Bless him for the burden. I said, Papa, pa did it? Here she up. I said, bless him for the birth. to get it out your system.
Give up on the baby. Because the burden is for what you're building. It's confusion in the moment. But it's going to make sense tomorrow. Prophesy to your neighbor. See, I see the storm is passing. to dance. He didn't take advantage of the moment. On the floor. Sit on the floor. You haven't really weeped until you weep over a burden. You don't know pain until you've experienced the pain. 
of a burden. The reason anxiety has hit the land, some of you all are experiencing anxiety. You're like, I've never dealt with this before. What is, what is this? It's, it's the burden. And you can't prescribe for a burden. There's no prescription for it. Because here's the problem. All of us have a different burden. So I can't advise you because I've never felt your burden. So all I can do is, watch this, here's for a praiser, is testify. And I can tell you what worked for me. What worked for me was to keep the cup feet. So I had to become a cup bearer. Keep the cup filled so that the king would give me answers. Whew. If you want answers, fill the cup. The Bible says, Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you shall. If you faint not. Sir, I intentionally do not talk to pastors prior to my coming. It's not for me to be rude. I don't like necessarily staff picking me up because they just be talking. Not, not that gentleman. No, no, he did great. Very quiet. And I just wouldn't, I, I'm off social media right now to hear from heaven for my next season. And so I don't know you. Uh, I only know uh, you by social media, but I don't, you know, when I go on social media, Yolanda will tell you, I go to my page, figure out what they're doing, get on off because I got too much business to be in other people's. And um, I, was, I was in my hotel room today. And I said, Lord, what would you have me to say? And he landed me on Nehemiah. And I immediately felt a weep. And I keep hearing transition. And we confuse trouble with transition. But you cannot define trouble without seeing the word transition. Sometimes, whoa, sometimes when you won't walk away, God has to hurt you away. He gives us every sign of the season is over. And because the signs aren't enough, sometimes God allow your heart to be broken. So he can shift you into a new seat. You cannot be under spirits of intimidation and be led. drop in this place and sit in my chest and say you heard well and I'm healing you from brokenness and let down and heartbreak and in quietness and in confidence Shall the Lord do for you? Shh, said the Lord. Be still and know that I am God.
Though the vision tarry, wait for it. You don't know how to see with new eyes. Your job right now is not to see, it's to be burdened. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this room. Right now, the Lord said, take the burden. I give you the strength of a donkey, of an ox, of a mule. Carry it. You're not going to break. It's heavy, but you won't break. Here's for 20 screamers. Those that stayed with you will grow with you. No, I, I hear the Lord say, those that stayed, every time you expand, so will they. The Lord says, I won't forget them. I won't forget them that remain. Lord, have mercy. Whoa, there's a glory coming. There's a glow. No, if you go to this church, you better give God a shout right now. There's a greater glow. Whoa, there's a great, whoa, whoa. There's a, hey, there's a great, hey. There's a greater, whoa, there's a greater glory coming. There's a greater, greater glory coming. With greater glories, building requires commitment, strength, and dedication. It's not for the weak. Be quiet. It's not for the weak. You haven't had a trial until you've had the trial of the Lord. It's the trial of the Lord that gives you identity. Until you had the trial of the Lord, you're under man's description. The trial of the Lord will make you unafraid of who doesn't stick by you. The, tr the trial of the Lord will give you the strength of Isaiah. That, that, that I'm going to say what he said, and I don't care who likes it. The trial of the Lord make, makes, you, makes you, nephew, feel like an outcast. Because you are the only one of you. You miss what I said. Yeah, yeah. And in the, 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 in the worst season of my life, 2020, 2021, I lost, when I say everything, and, and here's, here's the scary part, I lost everything, and they got to keep everything I gave. And I had to be okay with them looking like they were winning. Doors shut. Opportunities fell to the ground. And I had to suffer well. I wept. I cried. I grieved. I mourned. And I had to hear lie after lie. Why my pastor said, shut your mouth. Why my, my mentor said, shut your mouth. Take it. Lord have mercy. It's the burden. Take it. Take it. There's nothing to defend. Take it. Y'all so busy fighting rumors that you're missing the purpose of the burden. My mentality now is, whatever you heard, go hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> and this time, record it so you can put it on repeat. Whatever you think, keep thinking it. Whatever you believe, let it be your truth. Because I'm too burdened with building. 
worried about? Rumors. Lies. Losses. You're quiet. Don't wait to discover truth. Woo! And now ask me, how can I help you build? So the project is almost finished. You didn't see the blueprint, so you will miss parts that need attention. Are you okay with getting big if it has a burden attached to it? I cry more than I've ever cried in my life. I was in pain. I grieved. I didn't sleep. Some days I would overeat. Some days I wouldn't eat. Nausea, vomiting, headaches, stroke level blood pressure. One day wanted to die. Next day wanted to live. Next day wanna die. Next day wanna live. Next day wanna die. A a a a, a roller coaster of emotions. And, and in that very moment, I did three things. Number one. I signed up to become a psychologist and a psychiatrist simultaneously. So I'm working on a dual master's. Number, with a 4.0. Oh, right. Cause I'm gonna diagnose and prescribe, you understand. Right, right, right. Number two, y'all ain't ready. I worship. Yeah. You missed it over here. I'm I worship with nothing in me. If I couldn't do nothing but lift my hands, I would lift my hands. They would be breaking out in praise in, 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 in church, and I'm sitting there against a wall looking like this, what y'all shouting over. And all I could hear was it's the bird. And lastly, it just hit me, Bishop. And the Lord says, this is in vain if you can't identify what's coming out of this. And when he began to show me that my own school with almost 200 students was coming out of this. Oh, I'm sorry, paying students. Jealous over there. I'm gonna come over here. Talk to some people that like wealth. He took me off of the dependency of systems and said, if a church never calls me, he set me up. My God, how will you know God is not setting you up to be independent? To not need what you thought you needed. How did I do that? to school, I worshiped, I submitted to my leaders when 95% of the time I didn't like what he said. To, to have my leader sit me down for a year and a half and cancel over 140 booked engagements and tell me you can't weep and work a season to weep. My therapist, my mentor to say to me, you're, you're not okay. And we're going to find the thing in you that's not okay. So, so they done took my job. Y'all quiet. They done took my job. The speaker say man, if you don't. They done took my job. Doors have shut. I don't have family. Friends have walked out. House gone. in a foreign place. And it's hard to find help when you're always the answer. So I start doing crazy stuff. Like what, Dr. Brown? I started sewing $5,000. Uh-oh. 
You hear the amens, Lee? You hear the amens, Lee? Big thing. I, I was emptying out my account. The minute it would come in, I was. Because I'm going to say, Dr. Val, this costs too much. I can't do it right now. Give me a few days. Give me a minute. And I know in her head, she thinks, well, well, you just got it. I mean, I literally see what's going on in your account. What are you doing? I'm sowing for a burden. I'm talking big seeds. $7,000, $10,000. I would get $3,000 and give it away. Get $2,000 and give it away. Get $1,000 and sow it. I, I wasn't keeping nothing. Oh, y'all was trying to figure out how I was paying my bills? My pastor said, if I sit you down, I got to fund your seed. See, 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 here's the problem with spiritual fathers. You want to be a spiritual father, but you don't have the money to father them. Stop fathering what you can't fund. You can't tell me to have a seat and not feed me. No, my therapist, Dr. Bynerman, passed the show. They work together. He says, sit down for a year and a half. One month, Dr. Bynum would pay the rent. The next month, he would pay the rent. Oh, y'all quiet. Find you. Ooh. Pay my water bill, light bill, electric bill, all my bills. Then one day, Dr. Bynum said, Val, get up. Because my pastor made me go live in a church with Dr. Bynum. I'm here and praying at 4 o'clock in the morning, screaming, hollering. I was mad. I would go take a shower. Who takes a shower at 4 in the morning with nowhere to go? One day she came off the altar. She said, if you go take a shower one more time while I'm praying for you, she said, I'm carrying your burden. And you running from my prayer? Oh, gosh. Don't dishonor who's keeping you stable. Well, okay, I'm going to come back later. wake up at five in the morning have oil all over my head like what in the gut I be thinking I'm seeing ghosts she walking around in all white white robe I can't tell not much I didn't know at the time she was not disrupting my sleep she was awakening my burden Day. She said, do everything I tell you to do. I said, yes, ma'am. Come off social media. Yes, ma'am. Give me your phone. She started deleting text messages and pictures and phone numbers, blocking people. Stay off, stay off live. No more live. No more Zoom. No nothing. Go incognito. Hide. Said, well, I just got there. I, I'm just now arriving, and now you're going to take it. It's a burden. One day she said, Val, get up. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, where are we going? She said, take you to the Gucci store. I said, my God. Don't have no money for no Gucci. She said, I'm going to bless you for obedience. I'm not going to take your lifestyle from you because you're obeying me. Y'all quiet. As mad as I was at Dr. Bynum and Pastor Shamari White and co-pastor Jackie, there was not a time I would see them and wouldn't seed them. Because they were helping me discover my burden, not my blessing. Y'all quiet. See, y'all got a problem with Penina, but she's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I love Penina. Because Penina was a provoker. And Hannah didn't get pregnant until she got burdened by, by Penina's provoke. You need people around you that will provoke you until something starts growing in you. Give me 10 envelopes. Y'all have envelopes in this church? I need 10, quick. I need 10 envelopes, quick. Take your time and hurry up. While I feel the anointing on me, it's quickly, quickly. 
while I feel it on me. I'm serious. I, I don't play with. I don't play with this. I have no reason to. Ten. Is that ten? got a burden it's got a burden that is worth a sacrifice if you want to know how I made it out through worship and fear that's how I made it out and what I realize is it leaves your hand but it never leaves your life here's the scary part most of you won't put into your future what you will put in your hand. So what you say is, I would rather invest in my look than my life. Because a look is more important than a life. I'm looking for some life investment. They said, this is a vow I'm making tonight. I'm going to sow a seed tonight. I'm looking for 10 people that will sow a seed of $300 quickly. Even if you're on like, come now and get an envelope. If you are one, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. If somebody can provide me with the giving information. Quickly. Quickly. one more of you in here. There's one more. I know what he said. Now don't sit down if you was coming. Come anyway. I need, I need more envelopes, please, quickly. Else in here say, Well, she got her 10, she even got 11. I, I'm not going. D listen, because for some of you, the 300 wasn't even a sacrifice. You can sow by Givelify Kingdom Builders Worship Center. Those of you that are online, you can be a part too of this 300. Cash app, dollar sign K. Builders with an S church or Link Tree, Link Tree, Link TR dot e -E slash Kingdom Builders. Did I say that right? Is that right? I hope that's right. Okay. Give Lafay Kingdom Builders Worship Center, Builders with an S, Cash App, Dollar Sign K, Builders with an S church. Those of you that are giving the 300, I want you to come stand right here. Quickly. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Write your burden on the envelope. You don't have to write your name. Just write your burden. Young man, can you run over there to the sound man and get
get those ink pens for me, please. Thank you, sir. in this room are saying, Dr. Bell, I genuinely do not have the 300 but I can sow a seed tonight of $100. I want you to come now and get an envelope quickly, quickly, quickly. Bring me some more envelopes, please. Stand on this side, quickly. Those of you that can sow a seed of 100 tonight, quickly. If I don't have 100, I don't have 300, but I'm going to do the best I can. Jump up on your feet right now and get that seed together. Everybody in here got to give something. Every person in here. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, can I borrow a dollar from you? All you that are sowing the $300 seed, lift it high. Lift it high. Keep it lifted. of you, the 
that sowed that seed of $300. You're not going to like what I'm going to say, but hear me all the way through. The Lord says, get ready to feel something break. Because what you thought you had set up, he said, I want you to do it under my terms, at my condition. So if I have to destroy it, I will do so. But something with this seed, as you lay it on the altar, it's about to break. Lay it, lay it, lay it. Now rejoice out of your mouth. Rejoice out of your mouth. Rejoice. Out of, your, out of your mouth. Everyone that's sowing, come lay your seed down. Come lay it, come lay it, come lay it. Go stand by one person. Everybody, move quickly. Quickly, quickly. Look at the person that you chose to... prophetically felt led to and asked him, say, neighbor, I have to ask you a question. Say, neighbor, are you a giver? Wait for the answer. If they said no, you, you didn't hear well. Ask that same neighbor, say, neighbor, are you a praiser? Wait for the answer. Say, well, neighbor, since you give and since you praise, 
Y'all say it with some authority. Say, since you give and since you pray, I just wanted to see what it felt like to stand this close to the wealthiest person in the room. Now see what they do. Oh. See my shape. See what they do. See if they a liar. See if they tell the truth. See if they for real. I just wanted to see what wealth felt like. Tell your neighbor. I just wanted to see. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. You stood by a liar. You ain't stand by nobody telling it. You look like wealth. You look like expansion. You look like overflow. You look like. You look like. You look like redemption. You look like kingdom. You, you ain't hear me. I said, tell them you look like king. Tell them you look like something just broke in your life. You look like.
Hallelujah. When you come back through them doors on Sunday morning, you better tell somebody this is a designated praise sanctuary. Designated praise sanctuary. Hallelujah. I ain't taking no more mess. This is a designated praise place. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Our hands lifted. Let's get on out of here with the victory. Did you hear what I said? I said, let's get on out of here with the victory. With the victory. With the victory. No more hung down head and aching hearts. With the victory. I'm through crying about it. Through weeping. She said we can't work and weep. Can't work and weep. So we might as well get to work. Can't work and weep. Can't work and cry. Might as well get to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. What a celebration. What a celebration. God, as we leave this place, but never your presence. God, we pray that you will go before us, God. Give us traveling mercies. Help us to find everything in our homes the same way we left it or better. Oh, God, restore to the woman of God, her adjutant and our bishop, every kingdom builder, our minstrels, our musicians, our praisers, our worshipers. Oh, God, go before us. Help us to find everything in our homes the same way we left it or better. God, we thank you for this celebration. We thank you in Jesus' name. And we leave this place and look at your neighbor and say, may God cover you. May God keep you. And may he mightily bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God.